We've been using copy and paste the same way for 30 years. You find something, you press Ctrl C, you go somewhere else and you press Ctrl V. It works, but it's dumb. It's got zero brain power, meaning the input and the output are the same. Well, except sometimes the formatting gets jumbled. My point is that there's no processing that takes place between copying and pasting. But imagine there was a middleman, a tiny AI agent living between the copy and paste that can understand what you're holding and transform it to what you want before you drop it. So it would do things like copy an image and paste it into text, copy in Italian and paste it into English, and copy a large unorganized text and paste it into a CSV file. This actually already exists. It's hidden deep inside Windows right now and almost no one is using it. It's called Advanced AI Paste and it's part of Microsoft Power Toys. In this video, I'm gonna show you five ways in which I use this Paste with AI feature. Then I'll walk you through how you can set it up. Let's say I need a summary of an article for a research that I'm performing. Normally for something like this, I would copy the article. So I'm gonna do Control A, Control C, go to a tool like ChatGPT, give it a prompt, and paste the documentation in, send it off, wait a minute, then I would copy the result, then go to my note-taking application and paste it in, which is fine, but that took a couple of steps. We can streamline this with Paste with AI. Here's how Paste with AI feature will handle the same request. So again, I'm gonna do Control A, Control C to copy the article. Then I'm gonna bypass ChatGPT altogether and go straight to my note-taking application. Here, instead of doing Control V to paste the information, I'm gonna do Shift to Windows V. Now I get this dialog box that pops up. It's asking me for a prompt, so I'm gonna give it one. And hit Enter to send it off. Now it summarizes the article for me, and I'm just going to hit Paste. So what it's doing here is taking the copied information processing it with the prompt that you're giving it and pasting it into your final destination. So it's allowing you to bypass having to go out to another application to do that processing. Now for this example, let's grab an image of this pancake recipe. I want to extract text from it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit copy image. Now you can do this with traditional tools. So for example, if I were to come into OneNote, paste in the image, I'll right mouse click, make sure that I have make text and image searchable, enable it, then right click, select text from image, copy all text, paste it in. It did the job, but you can see the formatting is pretty messy. It doesn't maintain the structure of the text in the image. Now let's do the same example with Paste with AI. Create another note page for this. Go back. I'm gonna hit right click, copy image, go back to the note application. And instead of hitting Control V to paste the image, I'm gonna do Shift Windows V, and then we'll give it a prompt. Hit Enter and I will paste it in. And that did a pretty good job. Again, as a comparison, if I were to paste the image next to it, you can see that the information is accurate and the formatting has been maintained. Now let's do something a little more advanced here. Let's say I wanna buy a laptop and I'm browsing through Best Buy. There are lots of options, so it's hard for me to compare it this way. So what I wanna do is I will copy all of the laptops that are listed. Scroll down. And hit Control C. Then I'll come into Excel. And I hit Windows Shift V. And here I'll give it a prompt. 
extract in CSV format. I want the make, the description, the ratings, and price. Hit enter. And then we'll paste it in. And now it does have the comma separated value. You can see the commas. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of the first and the last line. I'll just delete it. And then selecting the first column because all the data is actually just pasted into the first column. I'll go to data, text to columns, choose delimited, hit next, and choose comma as the separator and I'll hit finish. And let's just clean this up a little bit. You can see I have the make, the description, the ratings, and the price is a little bit jumbled. And the reason for this is because of the price that's listed. If I go back to the web page, you can see some of them are going above a thousand dollars. So they're using comma as a separator. So $11.99, $13.49, they're showing up as separated value because of the comma is forcing the separation, right? So to get rid of this, let's actually modify the prompt. So let me delete this. So let's do this again. We're going to modify the prompt. So we'll do shift windows V again, and you can see the copy text is still there in the clipboard. We'll give it a prompt. Provide NCSV file format. I want the make, the description, the ratings, and price. And for price, provide value only. Do not use comma. We'll send that off and paste it in. And then as we did earlier, I just want to get rid of the first row and the last row. Select the first column, go to data, text to column, and choose comma as the separator, hit finish. And there you have it. Look how clean that looks. And this is all from the pace function. Okay, another way that I use this feature is for translation. Whether I'm reading an article that's in a foreign language or even an email communication that was written in a foreign language, I can just copy and paste it into the translated English language. So for example, I have an article here. It's written in Italian. I'm just gonna select everything, hit copy, then I'll go to my OneNote. Again, Shift Windows V. Summarize the key points into English and bullet points. Send it off. And paste it in. So this last use case is probably something that I use most often, and it's one of the simpler ones. So when I'm at home, especially I use whisper flow. It's a voice dictation app. So rather than typing, I'll just kind of verbalize and brain dump everything into one note. So obviously, you know, the text is not going to be refined or formatted correctly. And, you know, in the past I would then copy that information over to ChatGPT, have it refine it into an email message that I can then again copy and paste it into Outlook. Um, but now I can just brain dump everything into OneNote. So for example, let's say I need to send a message to my team. Hey team, happy new year. As we get started with the new year, I want us to have our kickoff meeting to plan our strategy for 2025. So if you can come back um, to our next meeting or if you can come to our next meeting with some thought starters, that would be great. Okay, so I have my message here. This is not good for an email, right? Um, so I will just 
hit copy, shift windows V, and give it a prompt, refine this text into a formal email message to the team. Send that off, and then paste it in. And there you have it. Now you can easily replicate all of the things that we showed today by copying and pasting the content into tools like ChatGPT or Google Gemini, then transferring the output to your final destination. Also, Microsoft's own Copilot is embedded within native Microsoft 365 applications, such as Outlook, OneNote, and PowerPoint. However, as with the other large language models, Copilot's functionality outside of these applications is not yet seamless. So if you're interested in using this, stick around because next I'll show you how to activate this in Power Toys. First, you want to check if you already have Power Toys installed in your system, and you can do that by going to your system search menu and typing in Power Toys. You can see that I have mine installed, but if you don't see your uh, Power Toys listed here, then you'll have to download it. Um, you can go to your web browser. I'll go to Chrome. And you can just type in Power Toys. And one of the first options you'll see is to install Power Toys. Click on that. You can install it from the Microsoft Store or you can install it from GitHub. I prefer to do it from GitHub, so we'll choose that option. And it'll take you to the GitHub page where you have several different options on which versions to install. So first consideration is if you actually go back down to your Windows search menu, and type about PC and click on it, you will see which system type you have. So mine is a 64-bit operating system. So I will choose the 64-bit. Uh, and I want it across the machine, not just per user. So I would be choosing this option. Okay. And once you click on it, the installation process is relatively straightforward. So I will skip that part. We're going to go to the Windows search menu and type in Power Toys, then select it from the list. Once the application launches, we want to go to Advanced Paste under Utilities, then enable Paste with AI. Then we'll need to choose which AI model we want to use with this. The top section lists online models and the bottom section uses local models that run off your computer. I'm gonna choose OpenAI. We do need to provide an API key. This sounds complicated, but it actually isn't. Just uh, stick with me here. But I do have to mention, there is a small modest fee associated with using API, but we're talking in terms of fraction of pennies, not in dollars. To create an OpenAI account, go to this website and choose Create New Secret Key. We can name the key. I'll type in Advanced Paste Tool. You can name it whatever you like. And just choose Default Project and select Create Secret Key. Now we can just copy this key, then hit Done. And we can paste it into the configuration box in the Power Toys window. Make sure to enable Advanced AI, toggle it on, then save. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is a small fee associated with using the API. You do have to add credit to your account before you can actually use the Advanced AI feature. To do that, come to this billing page here. The website is listed on top and I'm gonna include it in the description below. I'm just going to add in $5. That is the minimum credit amount you can enter. And again, for reference, the current GPT-4.0 model is about $10 for a million tokens. A million token is roughly 750,000 words. So this is gonna get you far. Once the payment is confirmed, you can start using the paste with AI feature with the OpenAI model. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you did, please make sure to subscribe for more contents like this. Thanks and bye for now.